Hello and welcome back. No, you're not in a time warp capsule or something like this. This is the picture from last video. Just wanted to start with it because here I explain something. Yeah. Here I explain something that if we want to measure the the voltage of this voltage source, this voltage source, then I end up in influencing the voltage with my measurement current. Okay? I cannot avoid this. Yeah. This everyone who measures should should be sure about this. What you see is not what it is. Yeah. Every person makes mistake. Every measurement has mistake. Wer misst, misst, misst. Is in German. Who measures measures crap. However, good news is failures like this, yeah, these are so called systematic errors. Yeah, I cannot avoid this. They are because of my measurement system, yeah, of my measurement way of measurement. I cannot avoid them. They are in my incorporated in my system so this means they are systematic errors yeah that's one error class we are dealing with new sheet write it down systematic error that's an error which lies in the way of my measurement. I cannot avoid it. Maybe I can think of another way to measure, but it's there. Okay. Good thing of systematic errors is they do have a sign. They usually go in one direction. Yeah. At this uh, uh, voltage source, they are the voltage is always dropping so it's a minus sign I measure two less yeah, they have a say sign and a value yeah, they have sign and value yeah. and if I know this value and the sign I can compensate yeah. it's compensatable these errors, if I know they are there, yeah, and I know how much I do influence, yeah, then I can compensate my systematic error by building a correction value, and this correction value is the same value with, but with the opposite sign, and then my uh, correct value is the displayed value plus this correction value. That's it. This is how to deal with systematic errors. Okay. Systematic errors are there. They are annoying, let's say. But because of their nature, they have a sign and a value and this can be compensated. That's the good thing about systematic errors. Okay. Another thing is if I do a measurement, or you do a measurement, or anybody does a measurement, and you're using the same equipment, yeah? the same temperature, everything's the same, the same object, and I do this measurement several times, I will get several results. Yeah? I do it x times, I have different results. That's really annoying. Yeah? That's really annoying because there are not just so-called systematic errors. Yeah, there are also random errors. That's a so-called random error. They are just by luck, by accident, however you want to call it. One time I read this value, second time I read another value, and read a one value again 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 
out of value, out of value, out of value, out of value. Annoying? Very annoying. Yeah. Because these random errors, they do not have sign and value, they are just random. Yeah. So this means with a single measurement, they are, they are not that secure. I cannot be too sure that this is exactly the value. Okay. So this random error, the bigger this is, the more insecure gets a single measurement. The only thing how I could deal with random errors is not to measure once, not to measure twice, and measure a lot of times, and then build the average of this. Yeah? So I can do statistic methods. I can add statistic methods. to deal with them okay these are the random errors okay so like I said uh, they are making there's a single single value single measured value they make it a little bit insecure yeah so how much insecure? Yeah. So we do an error. We know we do an error. Yeah. So we have usually we do have different different uh, givens on our measurement device. Yeah. There is for sure the absolute error I do. That's the most absolute error. I now make the absolute error. <laughs> okay, the absolute error, F, failure, uh, is displayed values minus true value. Uh, displayed minus true value. Uh, that's the displayed value, that's the true value. display value and the true value and the difference the difference is the absolute error okay same same if this is degree celsius and this is degree celsius this absolute error is also degree celsius if this is meters and this is meters the absolute error is also meters yeah absolute error then there are so-called relative errors There are two possibilities. One relative error is relative to the actual, uh, to the real value. Yeah. This is the absolute error divided by the true value. So this is displayed value minus true value divided by true value. And this is given in percent. Yeah? So this says, how many percent failure do we have? Yeah? Relative to the true value. Yeah? And there is also an error. Relative to the measurement range. Yeah? And this is the absolute error divided by the measurement range. Yeah. So this means this is the displayed value minus the true value divided by the measurement range also in percent. This is the one which is usually given at our at our measurement equipment. Yeah. There is given our yeah let's make let's make an example. Yeah we do have we do have uh, a measurement instrument 
and our measurement range is from 0 to 10 volt. So measurement range is 10 volt. Okay? And we know for whatever reason our true value should be 3.0 volt yeah? and our display value is 2.98 volts. Okay? Absolute error F displayed minus true is 2.98 volt minus 3.0 volt and this is minus 0 0.02 volts. Okay, absolute error. Clear, I hope. The error, the error relative to the true value is then F divided by the true value and this is 0 0.02 volt divided by 3.00 volt. Yeah. Now I'm going to take out my calculator. Because honestly, don't want to calculate this. Top of my head. Can you read it? Ah, looks looks pretty nice. So, 0 0.02 divided by 3, and this is 0 0.006 periodic. Yeah, this means 0 0.6 periodic percent. That's it. And now the relative error relative to the measurement range. This is F divided by the measurement range. This is 0 0.02 volt divided by 10 volt. And this is 0 0.002. So this is 0 0.2%. Okay? That are the different, different things, and this is usually given. Yeah. This is usually given that somebody who is producing a measurement equipment says, "Okay, this is the measurement range. This is the error, relative error, relative to the measurement range. It's 0.5%. Yeah. Is this good? Is this bad? I don't know. Yeah. Depends, depends on the case. You want to use it. Usually, our our uh, providers, our measurement system providers, they give something like a Genauigkeitsklasse, class, yeah. accuracy class. Yeah, it's GKL, Genauigkeitsklasse. And if this is one, this means. 1% relative error to the measurement range. Okay. So there are several, I mean, the lower the class, the more expensive. Yeah. 2.5, just guessing instruments. Yeah. So for low level things, 1.5, to one, which means uh, typical typical measurements instruments, which you can see somewhere built in. Yeah. If you want to pay or if you want to charge someone according your measurement, then you should use 0 0.5 to 0 0.3. Yeah. And if you're the one who is calibrating such things, then you should use 0 0.01 class. Yeah? 0 0.01% error. Yeah? Really expensive. Guessing instrument, very cheap. Yeah? Standard instruments for, for built-in. 
these are instruments when there is about to charge yeah for instance in the gas station or your your energy counter at home for the electrical energy and so on yeah and this is if you want to calibrate or the Bundeseich Vermessungsamt so the officials coming to check your measurement yeah then they use this type of measuring equipment which is really really a bit really expensive okay so what does it mean what does it mean which which thing do we have to use okay. let's say we do have a manometer pressure manometer with class one yeah, so this means 1% and we do have this 10 bar yeah, measurements range 0 to 10 bars yeah. what absolute error do we do we uh, expect yeah. so it's 10 multiplied by 0 0.01 yeah. so we do expect 0 0.1 bar f absolute error okay we do use 0 0.1 bar absolute error yeah. now let's pretend we are measuring something yeah let's say we measure let's say we measure a thing around we'll now make here an error chart so 0 0.5 1 bar 1.5 2 bar 2.5 3 bars 3.5 4 bars that's the pressure p and that's the failure yeah in percent and i will use there i don't know 5 10 15 uh 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. That's my errors. I make some helper lines. Let's do 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 again. Should be sufficient. Should be sufficient, should be sufficient, should be sufficient, should be sufficient, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, some, some helper lines still missing, these ones. I'm at the end. Okay, so if we only have 0 0.5 bar. How many percent is this? Yeah, what, zero dot one divided zero dot one u zero dot one divided by zero dot five yeah. twenty percent. So here we are at twenty percent error. Okay. At one. Oh, that's easy. 10%. At 1 1.5. 6.6%. Somewhere here. At 2, we have 5%. It's also easy. At 2.5. 
at three. We're ending up at 3.3%. Uh, okay, so 3.5, let's make the other ones too. 2.8% and 4, 2.5%, so in the middle here. What is the result? Yeah, I will make also one at 0 0.25. Where do we get this? Oh, the summer here by 40%. Yeah. This is how it looks like. Huh? That's the error scale. Yeah? So, what do we learn about this? If we are using the wrong type of measurement equipment then even said okay one percent is not too bad huh? then even this one percent let's say we're using this manometer to measure around 0 0.5 and one bar we're making huge huge mistakes that would be a stupid mistake huh? if i expect a value of let's say one bar i will use a manometer which is up to maybe two bars yeah. a little bit reserved double reserve should be sufficient yeah but then i'm in an area where the error is comparably low okay i just have to avoid to get into this area here below let's say 35 40 percent in this area here i make too much mistake uh, below 20% it's extreme yeah? that's you should keep this in mind yeah I mean you could weight yourself at the scale where usually uh, big trucks are weighted yeah then you step on and then there is written I don't know 80 kilograms and you're not sure have you 40 or 120 <laughs> that's exactly what what this means yeah? if you step on a on a scale which is up to i don't know 130 yeah and it shows 80 then you probably have 80 yeah? or maybe 79 or 81 but around this area because then you're in a much better even if they have the same accuracy accuracy class yeah always think of that so, it's if you want to measure small things, then use a measurement which is only measuring small things. Okay. If you want to measure big things, then you should something you should have to use a measurement equipment which is capable where the measurement range is high enough. Okay. Yeah. So that's the error. That's our our. This is what you should take away from the error. Yeah. One thing there is still missing. Yeah. Let's say I want to. I don't know what is lying around here. This one. Fuck. I want to measure, I want to measure the square, how many square meters, centimeters does this have? So I measure here, this length, yeah, five to two centimeters, yeah. I make an error, some error, yeah. Let's say this is one percent accuracy. I now made one percent error by measuring this, five to two. Then I measure the other side, yeah. seven, seven, yeah. and again make an error. I again make an error, yeah, because every single measurement there is an error, yeah. And I make here now one percent error, and I do make here one percent error. What does it mean? 
for the square? Yeah. Is it now 2% false? Or what is it? Yeah. Good news is, it's not 2% false. Yeah. Because I might measure here this one I might measure a little bit too short and this one I might measure a little bit too long and I have an absolute error of zero suddenly. Yeah. Both measurements were wrong, but I decompensated each other. So that might happen. Yeah? So that might happen that two measurements are compensating each other, two errors are compensating each other. Yeah? This is also the case. This is also the case if you use different equipment. You mean there is the sensor, there is the there is the uh, amplifier and so on. Uh, the sensor makes an error, the amplifier makes an error, and this is also the same case. They might compensate each other a little bit, but on the next reading they might add each other. Yeah, because if I measure this several times then I might have end up with some measurements which are too big, some have exactly compensated each other, then they are okay, and some are too small simply. Yeah. So there is this law of, of errors. Yeah. If you want to have a resulting error, total error in percent, yeah, this means Nothing more than plus minus, of course, because these percent errors are always plus minus. Yeah? The sum of all errors which are in there. Okay, that's that's how it looks like. So you. Square them all, these errors, yeah. make the sum of them, then make the square root, and that's the resulting error. Okay. That's, that's the situation. What does it mean? What does it mean? Like in my, in my previous example, in my previous example, yeah, I need another sheet of paper. I will simply use this one. Now it's checked. Yeah, checked paper. Maybe the autofocus is working then better. Let's see. Yeah. In my previous example I said, okay, I will I'll measure the area, yeah, the area of my, of this thing here. Yeah. And one time I do have 1% error, I square it, and the other time I measure, I have again 1% error, and then I make the square root, yeah? and that's my resulting error. Yeah? What is the outcome? 1 plus 1, 1 squared, 1 plus 1, it's the root of 2. Yeah? And this is 1.4, yeah, I think. 1.4% for 1, yeah. So, indeed, the error was getting bigger, because this is, this is a error, and this is an error. Okay. One interesting thing, yeah, let's, let's think about we try to measure we try to measure the efficiency of a water turbine. Yeah. We try to, to measure the efficiency of a water turbine and uh, therefore I measure the generator power yeah, and this is accurate with 0.5%. Yeah. Therefore I measure the volume flow of the water and this is accurate 1.5%. Okay. Then I measure the head of the water, so the pressure difference before and after the turbine, and this is very accurate, 0.1%. Pressure measurements are usually very, very accurate. And then, of course, 
there's also the efficiency of the generator and there's the efficiency of the generator I know with an accuracy of 0 to 2 percent. Yeah? All of these measurements are necessary to calculate the efficiency of the turbine. Okay? Oh, how the how the physics are behind? Please refer to to other topics. However, these values do have influence on my thing I want to measure. Yeah, I measure this, I measure this, I measure this, I measure this, and I calculate out of this a resulting variable. And I want to. This is insecure for 0.5%, this is insecure for 1.5% and so on and so on. And I want to know the insecureness of this turbine. Yeah. So I'm using the law. Yeah. The resulting error is 0 0.5 squared plus 1.5 squared plus 0 0.1 squared plus 0 0.2 squared. What is the outcome? Witzel 0 0.5 squared plus 1.5 squared plus 0 0.1 squared <laughs> plus 0 0.2 squared squared yeah equals 1.59%. That's the result. Yeah. And now somebody says, ooh, we build a new measurement. Yeah. Now yeah, we can measure the efficiency of the generator 0.2% better than before. So we have only 0.3% here. Okay. What is then the resulting error? F resulting is 0 0.3 squared plus 1.5 squared plus 0 0.1 squared plus 0 0.2 squared. It must be much better, I mean, much better, right? We really did an effort here. 0 0.3 equals who? 1.54% <laughs> Nice effort, but not really necessary. I mean, it did not It did help you 0.05% Wow However, another guy came and said ah, We now made the quantity measurement 0.2% better yeah, this is still the same because we said okay, that's not useful. Here, what does this mean? The resulting error is now 0 0.5 squared plus 1.3 squared <laughs> plus 0 0.1 squared. Plus, and now everybody squared. <sighs> okay. Enter it. Make it back to 0 0.5. And here now. Ooh. This 0 0.2% almost helped his 0 0.2%. This 0 0.2% helped his 0 0.05%. Uh, what do we learn from all of this? It only helps if one thing is clearly, clearly not that accurate than the other things. Yeah, It only helps if you improve this one thing where it's clearly inaccurate. It does not help to spend money on a measurement which is already good. Yeah, so, Or in other hand, if you're buying a crappy sensor with a lot of error, you cannot compensate this error by adding a lot of money with a first class amplifier. Yeah? The amplifier can be as good as it wants. If one thing is bad, then the total chain is bad. Yeah? That's 
this is also something you should keep in mind. The maximum error is the most defining one. It goes in with square. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, small errors, small square is even smaller. Big square, big. Okay, so keep this in mind, please. Keep this in mind. Uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it for the accuracy. So we have systematic error, we have systematic errors, we have random errors. Yeah. Random errors we can only deal, systematic errors we can compensate because they sign and value. We are random errors. We only have statistic methods. We have a separate video about this. Uh, so and then the errors, they are absolute errors which are given in the same unit, and they're relative errors relative to the measurement value and measurement and relative to the measurement range. And if you're using if you're using uh, measurement equipment, then please use a measurement equipment which is fitting to your expected expected value, uh, like we calculated here. And please, if you do have one measurement which is not that accurate or one element which is not that accurate, please don't think about making other ones better because then do your effort where it really counts. Good, that's about it for the for the error classes. Next time we are talking about the possible different errors we are going to see. Okay. So uh, for this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.